morning everybody we are arriving in Port de France in Martinique we decided this time is going to be more of a sightseeing so we're doing the discover Port de France from Royal Caribbean that's going to take us around to a lot of different land-based locations um, for more of a sightseeing tour nineteen oh two was actually when Mount Pelee erupted destroying St. Pierre in nineteen fifteen the city decided a house of God was needed which led to the Basilica of the Sacred Heart of Balta being built What's humbling is the amount of work that went into building this church. You had at least 40 men and women giving a hand, digging with pickaxes and looking very far from where the build was for the water, the sand, and the rocks that would be needed to construct the church. May 30th of 1926, the official benediction by His Lordship La Queen was cast over the church. On our drive, we pass lots of banana fields and sugarcane fields. Bananas are eaten all the time, and a local favorite dish is cooked bananas and sawfish. Sugarcane is used in the rum making process. We are on our last stop of our Discover Martinique tour. It is the Clement House Rum Distillery. It was established back in the early 1800s. It is interesting to note that there are actually two distinctive styles for making rum. One is agricultural, which is the use of sugarcane, and that is the method used in Martinique. They joke that that is the French way of making rum. The other way is industrial rum, which is made with molasses, and that's the rum you see in the other Caribbean islands. Here, you see the actual vats that are used for the fermentation process of the rum. So we are actually able to go and see the working machinery that's right above the gift shop area where the rum tasting is. So we're gonna take a look at all the distillery pieces from the mashing to the distilling to the boiling the whole nine yards here are the churning mechanism that was used to churn the mash The factory is environmentally friendly as it uses bigas collected from the crushed sugar cane as fuel to power the steam generators. So I take that back. <laughs> Walking in there, there's no pressure and there are speakers that are pumping out some of the sounds. So I guess it's a replication of what the process looks like. So the vats behind me are where the fermentation would have been during the rum making process. Ah, the aging process. For white rum, it comes right out of the vats. And for dark rum, it is aged at least three years in these oaken barrels. 
Now for the local lighter dark rum, it's more of a golden color and it's used in a lot of their local rum punches. It's only aged for 16 to 18 months. I think it's time to go to this gift shop and see if we can do a little rum tasting. What do you say? So I have a rum tasting of their golden rum. Again, this is aged 16 months to 18 months. It's got a very nice aroma. It's actually very, very smooth. It has a little bit of a tingle on the tongue, but definitely not a burning sensation that you feel with a lot of rums. I like it. I may have to get me a bottle. Prices were very reasonable between $11 US and about $80 US, depending on the size. Nice little look of some of their vintage collections. And as I was looking through them, everything looked delightful. Oh my goodness, I want that barrel. Next week's episode will be a tour of the Botanical Gardens. Will we see a hummingbird? I don't know, you have to come back and see. <laughs>